God chose to make known how great among the nations are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. A very pleasant good morning and welcome to our celebration of the Holy Eucharist this first Sunday in the season of the Epiphany. And as we do, of course, we want to thank God for the revelation of his Son, in whom we have the hope of salvation. We also, of course, want to make, as always, as a special intention of the celebration of this Eucharist, a prayer for those who are ill, uh, for those who are unable to, to join us for worship, and also a prayer for our nation. As you may have heard in the news this past week, we had a somewhat rough start to the new year. So let us pray for our nation, pray for each other, pray for our leaders, and let us make all of these part of the special intention of our celebration of the Holy Eucharist. And so we now observe a moment of silent prayer. and best of the sons of the morning. Dawn on all darkness and lend us Star of the east, the horizon For the 
God who said, Out of darkness light shall shine, has caused his light to shine in our hearts, the light which is the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen, alleluia, alleluia. Or collect for purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan, proclaim him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. We now have our liturgy of the word. A reading from the word of God, written in the book of Isaiah, the 42nd chapter, beginning to read at the first verse. Here is my servant, whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name, my glory, I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare, before they spring forth. I tell you of them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The voice of the Lord makes the old trees 
A reading from the Word of God, written in the book of Acts, the 10th chapter, beginning to read at the 34th verse. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears Him and does what is right is acceptable to Him. You know the message He sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sin through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus came to Jordan to be baptized by John. He did not come for pardon, but as his father's son, he came to share repentance with all who mourn their sins, to speak the vital sentence with which good news begins. He came to share temptation for us most poor and lost, for us and our salvation to die upon the cross. So when the dove descended on him, the Son of Man, the hidden years had entered, the age of Christ began. Come, Holy Spirit, aid us to keep the vows we make. This very day invade us and every bondage break. Come, give all life direction, the gifts we covet most, to share the resurrection that leads to pending The Lord be with you, and also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 3, beginning at verse 13. Glory to Christ our Savior. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now. For it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, 
This is my son, the beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. mouth and the meditation of our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. The book of Acts chapter 10 and reading verses 34 and 35. Then Peter began to speak to them. Truly, I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, Anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. My sisters and brothers, the season of the Epiphany invites us to celebrate the manifestation, unveiling, and revealing of God in Christ to the world. As such, it is an important season, and one for which we ought to dedicate some of our time contemplating and rediscovering its value to our discipleship of Jesus and our witness to others of his transforming love. In fact, this profoundly moving revelation of God begins with the Christmas story. The angelic visits to Elizabeth, Zachariah, Mary, Joseph, and the shepherds all announced the commencement of what can be described as a new chapter in the story of God's interaction with humanity. One can say that that interaction became more personal and intimate than ever before. The divine took on human flesh. The start of this story of disclosure is most richly told by St. Luke in his Gospel. Thanks to Luke, we have some details of the story not found anywhere else in the Gospels, and we are grateful indeed. It has made the story so much richer. On the Feast of the Epiphany, January 6th, marking the end of the Christmas season, the Gospel of Matthew introduces us to the mysterious visitors from the East who came to Jerusalem asking, quote, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observe his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. End of quote. This is an unmistakable and significant moment in the story, scholars assert, when it became clear 
that this new revelation of God was for the whole world, for all humankind, Jews and Gentiles alike. From near and far, people will be drawn to the God incarnate in Christ Jesus of Nazareth, desiring to be with, worship, obey, and adore him. God was making a salient point in the story of the visit of the Magi, the wise men from the East. The point is, God is not the exclusive possession of any one group of people or set of beliefs or tribal construct. The birth narratives themselves caution us not to limit our expectations and avowals of where, when, and among whom. God chooses to reveal himself. God and God alone makes such a decision. Many of the scriptural readings during the season of the Epiphany seek to further the narrative of God's revelation in Christ. From the baptism of John, the River Jordan, today's Gospel reading, to his first miracle, sign according to the Gospel of John, in Cana of Galilee, to the recognition by and calling off his disciples, the scriptural witness this season draws our attention to the incarnate God as he carries out his ministry, preaching, teaching, calling, healing, sending, restoring the people. In so doing, he of course reveals more of who he is more of who God is. The season of Epiphany closes with one of the most profound of these revelations, the Transfiguration. Here, the narrative takes us deeper into this disclosure of the divine human connection, thereby gives us a glimpse of the true nature of the incarnation, of God taking on human flesh. As a result, we today are given a foretaste of what potentially awaits us as well in the resurrection from the dead. Furthermore, my sisters and brothers, Epiphany honors more than the fact that God reveals himself in Christ Jesus. It is also important to note what such revelations tell us about the nature of God. The God revealed in Christ is one who is motivated solely by love. It is in love he created the world, and it is by love he sustains it. It is a result of his sacrificial love he redeems his creation. God's grace, mercy, compassion, and presence are to be seen as demonstrations of that love, active and transformative. The incarnation of such love means that we too are obligated to love one another. We too have the power to choose love over hate, good over evil, light over darkness, life over death. No small wonder that the gospel writers and others in telling this story highlight such contrasts and leaves no doubt as to what constitutes the right choice, the divine demand. Yet, there is a further point to be made. This story of revelation of the incarnation of the divine, underscored in the season of the Epiphany with our readings from Scripture, has another purpose. An encounter with the divine incarnation is bound to change us for good. Our perspectives on life, ourselves, and others are transformed, and we are given fresh eyes to see the beauty of God at work in the universe, in all that he has created, in all that is around us. The revelation has a pervasive influence and cuts to the core of who we are and who we are meant to be. The vision of Peter that sets the stage for this morning's epistle reading has Peter summarizing that vision with these words, quote, I truly understand 
that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. We may not fully comprehend the weight of these words of Peter, but they undoubtedly represent a sea change for this former Galilean fisherman who had such a remarkable encounter with the incarnate Lord and God. His perspective on the world had undergone a radical transformation. The way he saw himself, others, his ministry, the church, and his God would never be the same as a result. As such, my friends, my sisters and brothers, Peter holds out to you and me the hope that we too can be transformed and renewed by our experience of the incarnate God with whom this season of Epiphany beckons us to become reacquainted. Amen.
this morning we of course want to continue to pray for those who seek the prayerful support of the church we want to continue to pray for those who are ill of course pray for God's healing grace we pray for those who have lost loved one that they will indeed experience the comfort and strength of God's Holy Spirit and for all those who in every way are seeking God's presence in their lives, we pray that indeed they will come to discover him afresh. May we, as we said before, make use of this epiphany season to get to know God better and to make him known to others. So as we prepare for our prayers, let us observe a moment of silent prayer as we bring to God, before God, our own petitions. O God, the creator and preserver of all mankind, we pray for your people of every race and in every kind of need. Make your ways known on earth, your saving presence among all nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church throughout the world. Guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that all we profess, all who profess and call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth and hold the faith and the unity of spirit, in the bond of peace and in righteousness of life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your fatherly goodness all who are in any way afflicted or distressed in body, mind, or spirit, comfort and relieve them in their necessities. Give them patience under their sufferings. Bring good out of their afflictions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we continue by bringing before God our own petitions and prayers as we remember those who have asked us to pray for them and those, whether they ask or not, would appreciate our prayers at this time. Lord, in your mercy, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have your prayer books, we continue now on page 123 with the Act of Penitence. My sisters and brothers, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us therefore confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and one another in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, Grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness. And keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 
We are the body of Christ. By the one Spirit, we are all baptized into one body and have all been made to drink of the one Spirit. Let us then pursue the things that make for peace and build up the common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And we share that peace with each other. As we prepare to receive the offering today, we take this opportunity to give thanks to you for your ongoing support of the Anglican Diocese of Belize with your prayers and contributions. Thanks to your support, we are able to continue with this good work that God has called us to do in this part of His vineyard. You can make your contributions to any of our conks. Firstly, for the Belize Bank, our account numbers are 129-806-010-120-001 or 2363-7601-0120-025. Or you can pay using your eCash digital wallet via phone or tablet by scanning the QR code on your screen or clicking the link provided. You can also use our accounts at Atlantic Bank, account number 21064371. Or all at the M and T Bank, number one Fountain Plaza, Buffalo, New York, account number one five six nine eight zero zero four. Once again, thank you very much for your support, and may God continue to bless you and your family.
Through your goodness, Lord, we have this bread and wine to offer, the fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. They will become our spiritual food. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own do we give you. Blessed be God forever. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God of hope, in your Holy Spirit, you hovered over the face of the waters in creation, and in your pillar of fire you led your people to liberation across the Red Sea. Through the waters you brought your people into the life and land of promise. In your son's baptism at the Jordan, we see your creative and liberating purpose at work amid our human flaws and failures. And we hear anew with hope the promise of your voice. In our own baptism, you number us among your saints, created and redeemed for your glory. Through baptism, you bury us in death with Christ. Yet, raise us to new life with him forever. And so we gladly thank you with saints and angels and archangels and all the company of heaven singing the hymn of your unending praise. Blessing God, who sent down your Holy Spirit like a dove upon your beloved, send your Spirit among us now to sanctify us by your grace. By this power that of that same Spirit, make these gifts of bread and wine to be for us the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, who at supper with his disciples took bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup. Again, he gave you thanks and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Good 
Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father of glory, you have opened your heaven and come among us. Be close to those who ache for your liberating power in the midst of travails and seek your open heaven. Visit all who need the healing, forgiving, peacemaking, and restoring touch of your spirit and look for your kingdom to come. Bless all who long to be called beloved by sibling or parent or spouse or friend or child and any who are searching for the love that only you can bring until all stand in your presence and sing your name are, uh, and are enfolded in your embrace. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, ever one God. Amen. And now, as our Savior has taught us, so we pray. this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Our souls will feast and be satisfied, and we will sing glad songs of praise to him. We do not presume to come to this your table, most merciful Father, trusting in our own righteousness, but only in your boundless mercy. We are not even worthy to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the Lord, ever the same, ever merciful. Grant therefore, Lord of grace and love, that we may so eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and drink his blood, that with bodies and souls made clean from every stain of sin, we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Hail thou, source of every blessing, sovereign father of mankind, Gentiles now thy grace possessing in thy course and mission find. Once all of but now invited, we approach thy sacred throne in thy covenant united. Reconciled, redeemed, made one. Now revealed to Eastern sages, see the star of mercy shine. Mystery hid in former ages, mystery great of love divine. Hail thou, all inviting Saviour, Gentiles now their offerings bring. In thy temple seek thy favour, Jesus Christ, O Lord and King. Our post-communion prayer, let us pray. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you and all persons in you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now we pray for God's blessing upon us as we bring this service to a close. Christ, the Son of God, gladden your hearts with good news of his kingdom. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and your loved ones near or far this day and remain with you always. Amen. Birthday greetings this week go to Diana Fuller, Lloyd Wright, Shalema Young, Jamie Lord, Rene Young, Giselle Pilgrim, Devon Wright, Derek Satchwell, Carolyn Barrow, Rick Lopez, Doreen Woodai, Raul Bala, Jamila Cooper, Gabrielle Cole, Sheldon Sutherland, Ayana Charles, Gilbert Pilgrim III, Tonya Debeek, Renata Lala, Jamie Wald, Camila Gordona, Elva Morrison. May God continue to richly bless and keep each and every one of you. We take this opportunity, of course, to thank all those who helped to make uh, this service possible. Help us to bring this service to, to you, into your homes and so forth. We'd like to thank those, of course, who read lessons uh, today. We want to thank uh, Sister Pauline Sylvester, um, Brother Ray Davis, 
and Reverend Elizabeth Tullock for assisting with the readings uh, this morning. We also want to thank, of course, those who helped to provide music and song. We remember and thank the Sweet Chorale, this is Everyone Sweet, and the Diocesan Online Music Team. We also want to thank the Diocesan Online Ministry Team for uh, helping, of course, to organize it all. We also, also want to thank Love FM, Love TV, for broadcasting this service to the wider nation. Now remember, my sisters and brothers, if you would like to participate in the service or if you'd like to share a birthday or anniversary or some other greeting, um, inform us of uh, some event in your parish or, or mission, please don't hesitate to get in touch with us, of course. You can call our central office at 227-8055, 227-8055, or 227-3029, 227-3029. You can also WhatsApp us at 626-1821, 626-1821. And of course, you can always reach us via email at bzediocese at btl.net, bze diocese at btl.net. And we want to, of course, remind you, as you've seen in the news and so forth as well, COVID is still with us. It is the flu season uh, and all those sort of things. And so we really need to continue to um, exercise caution. Wear those masks still. Um, wash your hands well. Um, avoid crowds as well. I think that, that remains good advice. And so please, my sisters and brothers, take care of yourself, take care of your, your loved ones. And we take this opportunity now to wish you a safe and productive week. Go in peace, to love and serve the Lord and one another in the name of Christ. Amen. Sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face, and I know that in the presence of the Lord, sweet Holy Spirit. Oh.
God's grace. Without a doubt, we know that we are living with light, but we shall be 